Hola. Como esta usted? Um, how's it going? Hope everything is okay. Um, today, in this few, this moment, this time, together, but apart, uh, we're going to look at um, unstable nuclei and radioactive decay. Okay, let me start sharing my screen. Uh, there we go. Share. Pull this down. Come on. Screen share. Zoom. And we're going to go right here. All right, so what you see here, I'll get to it in a minute, okay? Um, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to turn on the screen. We're going to, let me get a different color. I'm going to call this, un, oops, I spelled that wrong. I'm going to write unstable, unstable nuclei and radio active decay. All right, so we've talked a little bit about unstable nuclei and base of, basically what causes our nucleus to be unstable is too many or too few electrons. Okay, um, like we said in class, when that ratio is far from one to one off, we're going to have an unstable nucleus. So we're going to have that we have too many or too few electrons. Ideally, for every one pro, too many or too few, oh my goodness gracious, neutrons. I just realized I was saying that. Absolutely not. Neutrons, 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 electrons are not even in the nucleus. Okay? So, an unstable nucleus is unstable because it has too many or too few neutrons. Ideally, for every one proton, there is a neutron. When that ratio, that one-to-one -one ratio gets way off, we have a nucleus that becomes unstable, all right? Well, in nature, whenever anything is unstable, it always aims to find stability, right? Just like people, well, ideally, right? So what do these unstable nuclei do to find stability? Well, on simple terms, they give off radiation. So I'm going to write unstable nuclei give off radiation in effort to become stable, okay? Yep, that's what they do. Now, this radiation in this process, right? Let's go, so we're dealing with the nucleus. And this nucleus is where the protons are. And if in this process, we actually change the number of protons, then we're gonna actually change the identity of the atom, right? Because the protons determine the identity of the atom. So in this process, we have um, one atom may turn, when, let's say one type of an atom may turn into another type of an atom. Right, so it's kind of cool. So we've got oxygens becoming nitrogens, oxygens, carb, um, yeah, oxygens becoming nitrogens, leads becoming thoriums, all these, or thoriums becoming lead. So that's kind of what how that's, we're messing with the nucleus so we could change the identity of the atom. Now, um, what you'll also see is that we're going to keep this simple. So for our sakes, we're going to talk about three basic types of radiation, right? Um, that is emitted in this process of becoming stable. And what we have here is alpha decay, right? That would have be an alpha particle. Okay, and the symbol is this. So it is essentially a helium nucleus, all right? Um, and it can be stopped by
paper. What that means is it's it's penetrating ability. It doesn't, oops, it does not have, when I say stopped by, I mean it's penetrating ability. It does not have the ability to penetrate a piece of paper. It is a very, um, it is very, it's heavy for most, compared to most other radiations. Um, and it is not as dangerous. It is the least dangerous form of, sorry, it is the least dangerous form, okay, of radiation, of the types that we are going to talk about and in general. Now, we are not gonna talk about all forms and all different types of nuclear changes, just the basics, all right? And the first basic is alpha decay. It is a type, alpha particles, are a type of radiation that may be emitted from a nucleus, okay? We can also hit nuclei with alpha particles, okay? But we're talking about alpha particles being emitted from the nucleus, all right? Um, secondly, and this would be the next dangerous of one step above alpha is gonna be our beta decay, okay? And we would then have beta particles are emitted. I'm going to write it differently from the nucleus, okay? So therefore, up above, right here, we've got alpha particles, not to confuse you, alpha particles emitted from the nucleus, right? Okay. And this is an alpha particle. It is essentially a helium nucleus. It just doesn't have the electrons, right? Um, and a beta is going to look like this, okay? Or some people give it a fancy B. It's essentially an electron, no mass, a charge of negative one, okay? Well, it can be blocked by aluminum foil or wood, okay? So it is more dangerous than alpha decay. However, it is not as dangerous as gamma rays, okay? These aren't, I'm not gonna call it decay, I'm not gonna even call them particles. It's high energy radiation. It is on the electromagnetic spectrum, the Hold on, right? Electromagnetic radiation spectrum, the EMR spectrum. So it's radiation. Gamma is the highest on that. It um, falls next to our X rays. Okay. Um, so it has a symbol and it looks like this, All right? And here we would need something like lead. Notice this, this is our most dangerous. So gamma rays can penetrate your body, damage your cells, and cause some serious issues, okay? Um, because the energy in them is so high, they, they can call molecular, cause molecular level changes, all right? So these are the three types of radiation it, we will discuss um, in terms of what nuclei give off in the effort to become stable. This is often called a chain reaction process. All right. And it is true that lead is the heaviest stable atom. Okay. So many of the heavier atoms decay and continue to decay until they get to a nuclei similar to that of leads, or like that of leads. All right. Um, I just put some pictures here in case I wanted to show you. Before we go any further, and I'm going to give you no, no, I'll, I'll go ahead and continue. And I, um, I'm going to get these pictures out of my way. I don't know that I want all of them today. Put that one down here. Get, this one up here a little bit. Okay, come on, one more try. You get away from him. 
There we go. Okay. So your job is going to be to, uh, from this point, write or complete nuclear equations. It is one of the easiest things you will do in this class. So easy. All right. Let's say that I'm going to get my periodic table. I want to reference the periodic table. You're going to need to reference the periodic table. All right. Um, I'm going to pick this guy down here, thorium, and I'm going to go, I'm going to write it, what I'm going to say. Thorium, um, let's make him 234. That would be TH-30, oops, dash 234. Undergoes alpha decay. Okay. And our job is to oop, write the nuclear equation. Okay. And I'm going to just finish that for the alpha decay, oops, decay of. Thorium 234, right? It's an example of nuclear process. Okay, so let's start like this, guys. I'm going to start with my symbol. I'm going to put, I'm going to use my isotopic notation that we talked about. I'm going to put the mass number up top. I'm going to find thorium on my periodic table, and he's atomic number 90, all right? He's going to undergo alpha decay. That means an alpha particle is going to be emitted from his nucleus, and we will write the alpha particle, right? So this arrow here tells me that I started with thorium, and then after the arrow tells me what I've ended with. Well, we have a law of conservation of mass, law of conservation of energy. If I st started with 90, this is almost like an equal sign, and I have a two down here, then it looks like I would need the number 88 to be here, such that 88 plus two equals 90. Okay, let's do the same on the top. We'll go 234 equals four plus, oh, that's easy, it's 230. All right, well, who is this element? Remember, this is my mass number, and I cannot identify an element based on this mass number, and this is my atomic number. So when I find atomic number 88, I'm like, oh, that is radon, radium, okay? Now, that is still an unstable nuclei, so what we would see happen is he would come here with his mass and his, well, the elements, atomic number, and he would continue to undergo alpha decay, right? Once again, we've got 88 equals two plus what? Well, that would be 86. And we've got, let's change that color, 230 equals four plus what? Well, that would be 226. I'm gonna use this number right here, 86, <laughs> where is he? Uh, radon, okay. Then that's still not stable. So we would see radon, 226. 86, emit an alpha particle, and in the process, turn into 84, 222. Well, if I look at 84, I've got polonium, and that's still not stable. So I would see polonium, 222, 84, emit an alpha particle, 84, equals two plus 82, 222 equals four plus 218. And that, my friends, gives me lead. And lead is a stable nuclei.
decay can stop. Okay, so in all of these processes, right, that's, that's similar, there's the process right there. Um, let's get them off of here, right? So here's, here's a similar process. You see how we have the law of conservation of mass here. So it's the, these two equal this, and um, these two, I'm mean, sorry, these two equal this, all right? And we have a little picture there. Um, and that's what your alpha decay equation is going to look like. All right. Uh, we could also, I'm going to go down here. We could also have beta decay. And students often make simple, silly mistake here. Okay. So let's say that we are going to write the equation for the beta decay of um, carbon-14, okay? All right, well, if carbon-14 decays, then carbon-14 needs to be on this side of the arrow because that's what we start with, okay? A fancy big arrow. So I'm gonna get carbon and put his mass up here. He's on the periodic table right here. It's talking about number six. And he is going to undergo beta decay. Well, this is a beta particle. So that will come after the arrow because it's coming out. And we also, once again, just kind of need to do the same thing there. And, um, right, we've got six equals negative one plus, and this is where students make the mistake, it is not five, it is in fact seven, because seven and negative one make six. And then on the top, we don't even have a change because 14, and then there, there is no mass here, so that's gonna stay 14, and atomic number seven is nitrogen, all right? So you just have to remember that the atomic number actually increases here, okay? Last one, write the equation for the beta, alpha, and gamma, I'm just gonna kind of make this up, decay of, um, let's have that be, I don't know, polonium, 209. Okay. I don't even know if that's what happened. Uh, but we have, put this over there. PO, polonium, mass 209. Polonium is right here. Got atomic number of 84. All right. We're going to go undergo three decays all at the same time. We've got beta, right? And we've got alpha, okay. And we've got gamma, okay. Well, remember gamma looks like this. We've got to make sure that we satisfy the fact that this, this, and this, and then therefore there must be something over here, right, have to equal 84. So um, right here, right, let's check it, oops, come on. This gives me a one, okay, one plus 83. So this seems to be 83. And here I've got four, right, the zero, the four, the zero equals 209 plus, okay. This here must be a, let's give that a different color, right, this, plus zero plus four plus zero has to equal 209. So that must be um, 205. Let's get a different color there, 205. Okay, notice that the gamma is just a ray. It is not a particle as it does not have um, any mass. 
Oops. Oh my goodness gracious. This was 20583. I didn't do, finish that is bismuth. This is just high energy radiation. It carries no mass, no charge. It does not change the atomic number. It now just does not change the mass number. Um, it typically accompanies other forms of radiation. It is the most dangerous. All right. Okay. Thanks. We'll leave that at that. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Oh, here, hold on. I'll get back to that. That'll make better sense when we are. Oh, here. Yeah, so we have, this is what we start with. Um, we could go this way. It would be an alpha decay, right? We could go, this is what we start with. We could go this way, right, where we lose the electron. Here we lose the He particle. This would be our beta decay. Or we could go this way, which is what we start with, our parent isotope. And what we end up with is our daughter isotope. Right, and um, this is just your high energy radiation, so that's your gamma decay. These are all decay, okay? It's actually really simple. It, it's actually not simple, but what we have to understand is very simple, okay? So um, for us, it's simple. It's actually really not that simple, but this, this is, okay? Just let me know what questions you might have.